Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and uh, a few videos ago I talked about linking to a video describing Newton sums, but I realized that we didn't actually have a video describing Newton sums, so this video I'll be describing how Newton sums works. So let's first go over what exactly Newton sums does. If we have a polynomial px, which is let's say equal to a n x power of n plus a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus all the way to a 0 and uh, this has roots x1 x2 all the way to xn we want to find the sum let's note at pk equal to p x1 to the k plus x2 to the k plus dot 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 all the way to x n to the k and we want to find this for any positive integer k what newton sums does is give us a recursion to calculate pk so let's look at what this recursion is the formulas are as follows we start with a n p 1 plus a 0 not a 0 sorry a n minus 1 n minus 1 sorry this tablet's really laggy a n minus 1 times 1 equals 0, and you'll see why I do the times 1 in just a moment. But anyways, this first equation is just Vieta's formulas, right? Because once we arrange, rearrange everything and get p1 equal to negative a n minus 1 over a n, we see that this is just the statement for the finding the sum of the roots of a polynomial. But it starts to differ at this point. We, the next equation is a n p 2 plus a n minus 1 p 1 plus a n minus 2 minus 2 times 2 is equal to 0. So now you see why I did a times 1 because the next pattern is times 2 and once we write the third equation down a n p 3 plus a n minus 1 p 2 plus a n minus 2 p 1 plus a n minus 3 well what do you think is multiplied to a n minus 3 well you guessed it it's 3 and this equals 0 and so this pattern keeps on going keeps on going like this and each equation describes a formula for uh, the next successive p k so by doing this first, the first equation, then the second equation, then the third equation, and so on, we can recursively calculate what p sub k is equal to. So you might notice that, okay, sure, this pattern works uh, pretty well until we get to pn. So let's move everything down a little bit. So now we have a n p n plus a n minus 1 p n minus 1 plus da 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 all the way to plus a 1 p 1 plus a 0 times n equals 0 okay well what happens after this? What happens when uh, p we, when we want to find p of n plus 1? We don't have enough coefficients to do that, right? Well, here's what happens at this point. When we Once we get to p n plus 1, let's see, a n minus 1, p n, uh, p just, just p n, plus da da da, all the way to a 1, p uh let's see which one should it be a1 p2 plus a0 p1 well what happens after this well we'd want to add the next coefficient but there is no coefficient here there's there's nothing here so what we do is we add 0 times n plus 1 but that's just 0 so we just don't add anything else we just set this equal to zero. So what happens once we get to p n plus one is that we just omit 
whatever is missing. Every, anything after this is just multiplied by zero. So of course the next one would be a n p n plus two plus da 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 da, da plus a one p three plus a zero p two equals zero. And then so on the pattern goes on like this, which each sum having a total of n plus one terms. So all of this algebra may seem a little daunting at first, so it's best if we go through an example. So let's take a polynomial. Let's just take a random polynomial like like p uh, px equals x cubed plus 3x squared plus, uh, plus 4x minus 8. And let's let a, b, c be roots. And we want to find, let's say, a plus b plus c, a squared plus b squared plus c squared, a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed, and a to the fourth plus b to the fourth plus c to the fourth. We want to find these. So let's take out Newton sums and just bash this all out. First step p1 times a n, which is a3. Well, okay, that's just the first coefficient, which is 1. 1 times p1 plus the next coefficient is 3 times 1 is equal to 0. This means that p1 is equal to negative 3. So that's our first answer. Now, next step. Okay, first coefficient is 1 times p2 plus 3 times p1 plus next coefficient of 4 times, we multiply by 2 this time, equals 0. Well, we already know that p1 is equal to negative 3. So once we move that to the other side, we get 9. Also, we know that 4 times 2 is 8. So when we move to the other side, we get 9 minus 8, which is 1. So p2 is equal to 9 minus 8, which is 1. So now we have our next answer. Let's continue. Keep on going. Write down the formulas. 4 times p1 minus 8 times 3 this time equals 0. Well, we know that p1 is negative 3, which means that when we move it over, we get 12. We know that p2 is 1, so when we move it over, we get negative 3. So 12 minus 3 is equal to 9. Finally, we have a negative 8 times 3, which is negative 24. So when we move it over, we get 9 plus 24, which is equal to 33. So this means that P3 is equal to 33. And finally, the last one, times P4 plus 3 times P3 plus 4 times P2 minus 8 times p1, and remember since we don't have any more coefficients after this, everything after that is just 0, so we just set this expression to 0. Now we know that p1 is equal to negative 3, p2 is equal to 1, p3 is equal to 33, so what's p4? I'll leave that as an exercise to the viewer. So anyways, the basic idea of this entire concept is that we have a series of uh, recursive formulas that we can use to calculate pk, starting with p1, then p2, then p3, then all the way to pk, where the formula is basically just you take the leading coefficient and put it first, then you take the second coefficient and you draw it second, and then you have each successive coefficient, you write it down, and then at the end, if we still have coefficients left, we multiply by whichever line it is. So this would be line number one, line, line number two, and line number three. We multiply by whatever the line number is. And if there aren't enough coefficients left, for example, right here, then we just ignore what's after that. And all of these equations we set to zero. So using these Newton sums, we can be able to find PK for any K that we choose. So the problem is basically, say you have an arbitrary face on some cube, like an 
arbitrary cube 